Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about two new ways of organizing data, namely stacks and queues. So far, we've seen the difference between an interface and an implementation. For example, we had the shape interface, which declared a set of operations, uh, get area, get position, things like that, and then a circle class, an implementation of the shape interface for a particular type of shape. And when we think about data structures, we often refer to the interface for a data structure as the abstract data type, or ADT. Where we would say that the abstract data type of a list says a list type thing has operations such as the ability to add things and remove things from that list, the ability to check whether the list contains a particular value, the ability to determine what the size of our list, how many things are in it. And so this abstract data type says all right, lists can do these things. They're abstractly, something that is a list, kind of is a list-like way of representing data, provides these operations. And then the implementation of a list, the way that these operations are actually provided in code, can be done different ways. And we've seen the array list, the kind of uh, resizable array approach. We've talked about a link list, a way that provide, can provide these operations with this kind of dynamic structure that's a chain of references. And so today we're going to look at two fundamental abstract data types in computer science called stacks and queues. These are so simple that they almost seem not worth studying and they're sort of the programming equivalent of drawers and shelves. Uh, drawers and shelves are very simple, um, but we find uses for them uh, everywhere uh, that we go. And uh, stacks and queues are also useful to study because they provide an example of a minimal kind of data structure. And what I mean by minimal is one with a very restricted set of operations. We can only do a small number of different things and only interact with these uh, ways of structuring data in a limited way. But there is power in this simplicity, both because we like solving problems with the simplest uh, possible solution and also because uh, a restricted set of operations uh, provides for a large flexibility in terms of how they're actually implemented. So like lists, stacks and queues will be used to store an ordered set of values. So let's specify the minimal set of operations uh, that such a structure would require. So we need we need a way to add values uh, to the structure, to put, put values into uh, our, our data structure. Uh, we need a way to take values out, something like a remove operation. And uh, we also will need a way to test if anything is left in the structure. So a way to, to say that it, that it is empty. And if these three represent kind of the bare minimum that we're going to need. Probably also going to want some way to ask how many things are in the structure, uh, but that's kind of not part, not strictly necessary uh, to make this work. So what are stacks and queues? Stacks are what is called a last in, first out, or LIFO uh, structure, meaning that the last value 
that is added to the structure is the first to be removed. And in contrast, Q's are a FIFO structure standing for first in, first out. So let's talk about how to visualize this by analogy. So a stack you might think of as like a, a stack of uh, plates in the dining hall where when you take uh, a plate from the stack, you take one off the top when someone comes to, and, and you wouldn't want to take one on the bottom, off the bottom because you have to move a bunch of plates out of the way. And when someone comes to add more plates to the stack, they add it to the top. And this has the effect of, reverse, uh, of reversing things. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So I have three markers here, red, green, and blue. And I'm going to put them into my stack, red first, then green, then blue. So blue, we would say, is on top of this stack of three markers. And then when I take these markers off the stack, blue comes off first. It was the last one to be put in. It's the first one to come out. Then out comes green, then out comes red. And if you remember, I started with red, green, blue, and after I have removed them, I have green, uh, blue, green, red. And so I've putting them into the stack and removing them has reversed the order due to this last in first out behavior. Cues are something that we also encounter in everyday life. You might think of a line at the grocery store uh, when customers are ready to uh, check out. Uh, they line up and the first person in, uh, in the line is the first person uh, to, to uh, leave the line and, and check out. And so queues are a first in, first out. You just get in the end of the line and then you leave at the beginning of the line. And in fact, in uh, British English, uh, queue is used as a verb meaning to line up. So to uh, queue for uh, for the movie would be to kind of get in line for the movie. So how about applications for cues and stacks in computer science? So uh, cues are uh, used for things like uh, first come, first serve uh, resource allocation. So if there's some uh, a resource a computer system is managing, uh, you might use a queue to, to, to manage access to give it out in a first come, first serve uh, uh, manner. Um, there's also uh, operations that involve asynchronous data transfer often use queues. So an example of this is, uh, th this is very common in input output operations in computer systems. So for example, uh, when your uh, program prompts the user for input, say you're asking the user to input three numbers, um, your code likely processes the numbers one at a time, kind of reads and parses the first number and then the second number and then the third number. And so the other text uh, must exist somewhere while you're processing that first number. And in fact, it very likely exists in a queue somewhere in the computer system, a queue of unprocessed input. And every time, say, you use your scanner object to say, read the next integer, it's taking part of the text out of that queue um, uh, for that purpose. Uh, queues also come up a lot in simulations of the real world. So in a, in a future topic, we'll see an example where a cue is used uh, to simulate oscillating sound waves. Uh, you can imagine it being used to simulate transportation uh, since they're uh, 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 trains and, and cars 
uh, have to operate in the first uh, in first out as they're as they're traveling on roads or or rails. Uh, different logistics things with um, uh, materials, packages, or whatever being sent various places. Queues uh, are going to come up if you're asking a computer system to kind of simulate this sort of behavior. All right, how about stacks? Stacks are it turns out a kind of fundamental mechanism uh, in computing that they're uh, used for uh, programming language interpreters and compilers. Uh, they're used to, to manage memory and function calls. Uh, and if you take uh, CS208 or 251, you're going to learn a lot more about that. But we can also see an example of a stack uh, when using a web browser. So if I open a new tab and I go to uh, different news sites, like the site for the uh, Minneapolis Star Tribune, uh, and then Vox.com, and then 538.com. What I essentially have is a stack of the sites I visited with 538 on top, and the back button removes things from this stack and takes me back to the next thing that was on the stack. So I like 538, I click back, that's removed from the stack, and now I'm on the page that was below that in this stack of, of websites, fox.com, hit back again, I take the thing off the top of the stack, and I have the Star Tribune page, I hit back and I'm back to where I started. So this, uh, this is also the case for kind of undo, redo functionality in all sorts of programs, right? You make a bunch of edits, and when you hit undo, it's the last thing that you did that is the first thing to be undone. And so uh, a stack is how this is being, uh, is how this behavior is, is happening. Another uh, computing example is a programming language called PostScript. PostScript. And this is the language that um, is used to communicate or display documents, primarily by laser printers. Uh, and this was developed in the 1980s. Uh, it revolutionized uh, kind of publishing in terms of print media. And the PDF format, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is based on PostScript. Um, and on the screen now, I have a small PostScript example where uh, this PostScript code over here Every single one of these commands, like 100, 100, uh, move to 100, 300, line to, all of these either put a value, add a value to our stack, or remove values from our stack, and uh, thereby affect the, the behavior of kind of a drawing or printing program. And so in particular, this uh, bit of code, we're going to put two 100s on the stack, and then move to says, all right, take the things that are currently on the stack and use them to like move our cursor to a location. Line two, line two, and these three line twos would kind of be part of drawing this, uh, defining a, a, a path, uh, and then uh, a stroke command to, to draw the path. And so this PostScript language is stack-based, kind of everything is operating uh, on a stack, and uh, you will, in fact, do a lab where you're implementing a small part of PostScript uh, yourself. All right, so let's talk about the actual APIs, the actual public methods that our stack and queue abstract data types will provide. So for our stack, we are going to have... And this is for a stack containing objects of type E. So this is this Java generic uh, syntax. So uh, for a stack containing objects of type E, we're going to have a method push, uh, which pushes a, which adds a value to the top of the stack. And uh, it's kind of by convention, this is called pushing a value on top of the stack. And so this uh, this method is, is 
typically called push. And we have a method pop that pops the value on uh, pops the value off the top of the stack. So push is how we're adding values to the top of the stack, how we're piling things up. Pop or removing from the top of the stack. Uh, we'll also have is empty and size. So we can ask is the stack empty, true or false, and also find out how many objects are currently in the stack. And queues will have a similar set of operations. Uh, they will have different names. So uh, is empty in size will actually be exactly the same. for a uh, queue as for a stack, but we will call our method that adds to the queue. We're going to call this add. This will be for a queue holding values of some generic type E. And we'll also have a remove uh, that removes a value. And this will follow this first in, first out behavior. So you might think of, uh, I talked about push. We push onto the top of the stack and then pop off the top of the stack for Q. And think of add to the end of the Q, remove from the beginning of the Q. So like it's, like it's a, a line of things. And uh, there's sometimes add is called NQ and sometimes remove is called DQ, but we'll stick with add and remove since that's what uh, the data structures in the Java library use. They use add and remove, but uh, you may see NQ and DQ other places. All right, so let's practice writing some code uh, using stacks and queues. So I'm going to uh, declare a string array. I'll call it data. And I'm going to initialize it to a particular set of strings. Uh, and in this case, uh, the beginning of uh, the Gettysburg Address, a speech by Abraham Lincoln. That begins four score and seven years ago. And then I'm going to create a uh, queue, if I can spell it, that holds strings. I'll call it queue. And in Java, queue, which I will go ahead and import, uh, is an interface. So I can't actually say new queue. You see, it's, it's complaining uh, that cannot instantiate type Q. So Q is an interface. You can't create a thing. Uh, you can't create an object from an interface, only from a class that actually implements those methods. Uh, and so actually in, uh, in Java, not linked link, but linked list, the linked list uh, class actually implements the queue interface in Java. Uh, and so we can have our variable queue be of the interface type uh, so that Java treats it as just having the uh, methods of that interface. And then when we actually uh, create the object for it, it just needs to be a class that implements that interface. However, Java made uh, a bit of a whoopsie uh, in, its, uh, in designing its standard library in that the stack uh, in, is actually not an interface, it's a class. So it would be 
uh, it would make sense if both stack and queue were an interface, but unfortunately the Java library did not uh, make the right choice there. All right, so I've, I've created my queue and my stack, and then I'm going to use this uh, Java's for each loop to uh, loop over each string in my array data and add it to my queue and push it onto my stack. And then I want to print out, oh, I have an extra one of these. Then I want to print out the initial queue And then I'll want to keep track. Uh, I'll, I'll want to see how the queue changes uh, as I remove things from it. So I'll say while uh, queue is not empty, note how I'm using the exclamation point to uh, say not some Boolean value. So while the queue is not empty, I'm going to remove and remove the, the string at the front of the queue uh, and then print out uh, removing stir. Now my queue equals plus Q. And because uh, the linked list object uh, implements a two-string method. When I uh, concatenate it with a string and go to print it out, uh, Java will automatically use its two-string method to turn it into a string uh, for that purpose. Then I'll just uh, have a call to print line with nothing in it, which just prints a blank line. And then I'll do this same thing uh, with my stack so we can compare. So initial stack equals s, while s is not empty, we pop something off the stack and then print out a message about that. And so at this point, I can go ahead and run my code. And we can see that the initial queue has the, the data that we added to it four score and seven years ago. And each time we remove, we remove from the front of our queue. Now our stack prints it out in the same order that the queue does. Uh, but the top of the stack, the place that we, uh, that we are removing from is, is the end of what it's showing here. So our queue, we put in four, we put in, uh, we added score and seven years ago, and a go was added to the end, and then we remove from the front. So we remove four and then score. Whereas with stack, we remove from uh, the, the last, the, the most recently uh, added value is the one that gets removed uh, from a stack, our last in, first out. So we remove a go, years, seven, and score four. And so we actually see that these are being rem removed in kind of the reverse order uh, that they were added, uh, like we expect. Uh, uh, to kind of draw this in in picture form, we uh, might often draw cues as uh, a line where uh, we first added uh, uh, four. And our queue just had four, and then the next thing gets added at the end of our queue. And so each time we were adding our string onto the end of the queue, and then when we remove, we're always removing from the front. So remove four, score, and seven. Stacks, on the other hand, are often drawn 
in a vertical fashion uh, because uh, since we're kind of pushing and popping things from the top of our stack, kind of that's the, the physical analog, we push four score and seven years ago. Each time that we push something on, uh, it goes on the top and each new thing on top of that. And this makes it maybe easier to see that when we then start popping uh, values off of our stack, we begin with uh, the last one that was pushed on and get a go year seven and score four. All right. That was the kind of abstract data type view of stacks and queues. And the next topic, we'll see how we might implement these both using arrays and linked lists and kind of what the differences are there. So see you next time.